What if you could go back to your very first Minecraft world? If you could explore a distant memory and reassign purpose to all these creations you made all those years ago, what would that mean to you? Would there be a strong catharsis associated with reliving something you thought was gone? Or would you simply just find it interesting and not even give it a second thought? Either way, I feel that most would agree this would be an interesting and a personal experience that would be hard for others to truly comprehend. Now, what if they weren't your worlds? What if they were someone else's? How would that feeling change? That's exactly what I set out to do here. And this is a long video. With that though, I feel like different parts of what you're about to see resonate with different people in their own unique ways. So, I hope you can find something interesting here, as I most definitely did. Loading into the first world here, we have I Skateboard's Cool World. And we instantly spawn in this little castle town. Uh, but I'm instantly drawn to these dark corners, uh, and I just kind of have to light them up. That's just how my little bug brain works. So I do that as my first priority, of course. Okay, and now that that's done, we go and check out these little guest houses, and there's not really much in them. I checked all of them just to be sure, but I was pretty confident there was nothing in them, so I make my way back out. And I, you can't really see much because it's nighttime, so I'm just kind of checking out this place. But uh, then I see a little, just a little wooden house, so I go over to check it out. And I, I take note of these little dirt blocks I'm seeing on the ground. Uh, my brain just is inclined to put the torch there. And then this chest has a bunch of stuff, uh, but the only real useful thing in it to me is just one iron pickaxe. So I swap that out for one of my stone ones, uh, and you know, just look around a little bit more. There's nothing in the furnaces, nothing of value at least. And I come back around the house, and I see this um, this little hole here, right? Which is a little odd. Uh, I don't know if it's like a minor, like a work in progress basement. And this is um, something about these pillars is just really weird to me. I don't know if that was just like an intentional thing. I don't know if he was trying to find iron or something, but just the construction of them is just kind of odd. And then there's just a big pit. But coming back out of this hole, we see there's more of these pillars on the other side that I didn't even notice because I just didn't look back when I came up. And there's a little pond here. And I noticed this wood pillar looks like looks like you would get stuck down here and then dig up or build up to try to find your way back out. Um, but it's there's just really not much. It's only like four blocks under the under the ground, really. So then I'm again drawn to these dirt blocks, so I start breaking them, and sure enough, it's the same thing. Um, there are a bunch of dirt blocks, which would not spawn like this naturally. Uh, not in a one by one line at least, so I dig down because something had to have been dug here. And uh, it's just a little, like, hole. <laughs> it's it's kind of really weird because it makes you wonder, did he find the hole somehow and then dig up? He, he couldn't have because this is just a circle. There's, it's just a little sphere of place. There's no entrance to it. Yeah, I even check it out, this dirt right here. And while there is some stuff behind, unless he went through the trouble of smelting smooth stone down to block off this random path, to this, again, closed off area. It's just, it's weird. I don't, I don't understand how this came to be, or if you just got really lucky just digging down, but why would you just dig down? So then I instantly notice that there's more dirt, um, but strangely enough, this one doesn't go anywhere, uh, but I redirect my attention to this just, this just weird wood structure. I, I really don't know what it's supposed to be, um, I don't know if it's like a marker. I mean, there's there's not really any other locations here that you would need to see a marker from, but I mean, I even dig out under it and there's just really nothing here. And then I see some wood planks here too. It's, uh, it's a little mine that connects to the other mine we were in with all the pillars and such, which I guess is just another of those situations where he maybe got lost um, in the mine and needed to dig out somewhere. And I see some more dirt blocks again. But uh, I decide to maybe do this at day so I can actually see anything.
Yeah, so I'm digging this dirt block path down. And this time it turns to sand, so he was getting real resourceful here. Uh, it's just a little pond. Uh, again, I don't know how anyone would have really gotten here in the first place. <laughs> or if the creator of this world just decided that he needed to dig down in this area. But I, I dig down even further and it's, again, it's just smooth stone. So then there's a woodblock tower. So of course I have to dig that down. And it just um, leads to some stone, but then also just a little hole. So I guess it's likely that the creator of this world did make smooth stone just to just to fill in some holes because I I don't think it would have been possible for that to be there otherwise unless just the maybe sand fell down. I'm I'm not sure. I decide that I uh, I want to get on top of this whole little castle town area, so I just make a bunch of ladders. I go on top of one of the little spire things. I'm just looking out to see if there's maybe anything I really missed in this world, and I'm honestly not seeing much. So I make my way out to an area I haven't explored, just past where I was, um, and there's again not really much here either. I see some leaves that are different color, but that's about it. Until I notice that this is a tree that had only been halfway cut down, so there definitely were some signs of life here. And then I see a torch, which means this little cave area was explored to some extent. But ultimately, besides a few resources that I feel inclined to collect for some reason, there's really not much here. So I'm just finishing things up in this world. I remember seeing a little patch of dirt here. Um, honestly, this could just be world generation, but I figured it wouldn't hurt to check because it is pretty odd. But I think around beaches, it's pretty likely for things to just kind of get weird during world generation, especially in this version. So I'm just wrapping everything up. Um, I decided I want to build just a little tower with some some ladders on it, just to get an overview uh, in case I missed anything. But ultimately, I come out of this one thinking that this is a survival world that did have a considerable amount of work put into it. But I think after a certain point, maybe an hour or two into the world, um, the creator realized that they probably wanted to upload this and share it and kind of wanted to make a spectacle which I think a lot of people did back then because servers weren't very popular unless you had like a group of friends. So yeah, I think that's what happened here. I think this is someone's personal creation that they just wanted to share. I don't think it went very far in development, but for what it's worth, it was a nice little adventure. This next world here is Ian's world. Uh, that's the folder name and it's called Millionaire, which Strikes me as odd originally, and you'll see why. So loading in here, it's just a bunch of signs. Uh, it says it'd be a great server map, I guess if you want to play with other people. And um, I like that there's armor and tools here. I think when whoever made this map made this map, they are probably thinking some guy 12 years from now is probably going to want to explore this and wants it to be an easy process. So I get geared up and I head out. And instantly, um, something strikes me as odd. You see these half dirt, half wood houses, um, which is a pretty popular feature of the Millionaire mod, which was a really big thing um, in earlier beta versions of Minecraft. I remember playing the Millionaire when it was included with the Yogbox mod packs. Um, those were always really interesting. But I think adding them to this world, um, I don't think it'd add very much. I know the NPCs would probably be there, but outside of that, I don't think there is a ton to gain. Because, I could be wrong, but outside of maybe locked chests, I think these earlier versions of the mod did not introduce any real new blocks, or at least built with them. So I think what we're seeing here is pretty much a vanilla world. Um, the only thing I will say is that I think that maybe Ian is a dirty liar, um, because he did not build these. 
but it's okay. You know, we all learn from our mistakes. But yeah, all these chests are pretty much empty. There's really not a lot here except for a kind of cool fountain that uses just a water source block. But I think this building that I'm coming up to right now, um, I think this may have been the town hall. For each of these uh, little towns they would generate on this mod, there was like a town hall. And you could donate resources. And once the villagers got enough resources, I say villagers, they weren't legitimate villagers. They were uh, modded NPCs before villagers. But once they got enough resources, they would start upgrading their village um, on their own. And it was like really cool. I remember I would go on these mod packs with the millionaire mod. And if they had, I think it was called the, the timber mod, you could chop down trees and you know, they'd all, all the blocks would fall down, which is a really popular feature in mods now. But back then you would just look for really big trees. You know, a lot of old mods introduced really big trees before like the, the two by two jungle trees and such. And if you had all that wood, you could donate all that wood to them. And not only would they start building up their, their base a lot, but they would also respect and trust you more. So I guess I wrote Ian off a little too early because apparently Colorbeard's treasure is here. Colorbeard did not hide his treasure very well. It was very easy to find. Um, and wouldn't you know it, whoa, Colorbeard's treasure is crazy. He's got so many diamonds. I can't wait to to use these. That's the thing with um, older Minecraft worlds and people who used to play on Minecraft in the beta versions. They would just they just get a bunch of diamond and, and gold and iron blocks, mostly because it just looked cool. But like most of the time, and hopefully most of the time, I guess I should say, it was all just hacked in, or you know duplicated and stuff like that. So with a really limited block palette back then, you really do see these blocks uh, that get duplicated and stuff just being used in a lot of stuff because because there really wasn't much else to build with. But again, coming up on the end of this world, uh, it always seems like it's night whenever I do that. Um, I'm just wandering around and then I see a tree is very much on fire. Um, so I go to explore it, but spoiler alert, there's nothing really happening. So, this world is kind of a dud to me. Um, again, it really does just look like someone installed the Millionaire mod, generated a village with it, put up a few signs, and uploaded it. Which isn't bad. Um, you know, people do that kind of stuff with mod generation nowadays. You know, if things like uh, terraforming mods don't, don't introduce new blocks, you can, you know, just generate a world, load a lot of chunks, and then play it as vanilla. Um, which is always cool, and it's interesting because I, I mean, that's kind of the same thing that's happening here, except to a much smaller degree. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it to this world. This one is pretty much an honorable mention because, uh, unbeknownst to me, it's a survival island map, and as soon as it spawns you in, it says, don't leave this island, welcome, don't die, play on normal or hard. Spoiler alert, I'm not playing on normal or hard, I'm playing on peaceful because it is easier and less frustrating that way. I open up this chest and there's some leather gear and a pig spawner. I wonder how many pigs that'll spawn in the entirety of my little playthrough here. I see some signs just a few blocks away from the main island, so I, I check those out. And this just says, just quickly come to the island, as if you know you were regretting it, and I, I was. I was like, man, I'm scared, I don't want to be away from the island. I really get set up here, you know, I start growing all this sugarcane and cactus, you know, I'm, I'm ready to, to devote some time to this one. And there's a bunch of objectives. I have to build a brick structure, I have to find the treasure, go to the nether, I have to build a portal. I also have to build a tree farm, find the mushroom grove, and build a house in this tree, which is just a normal <laughs> a big oak tree. There's really not a lot of room there to go around. And then I can leave the island, and there's some signs over there, so that's... That's my final objective. Of course I want to get there. I want to know what those two signs say. I have to know. But yeah, again, this map is somewhat of an honorable mention to me because it it's not really a survival map. This isn't someone's map that they just decided to upload, um, no matter how much it may have seemed like that from the forum post. So to me, it just feels like, you know, this wasn't exactly what I was going for, but it's still interesting. So I guess I found the Mushroom Grove. It's... 
quite literally just a few <laughs> blocks with some mushrooms on it, which is fine. I don't really need the mushrooms, but I, I appreciate them. And then I see there's some cobblestone here, so I'm like, oh, someone's been here, so you know, let's go down that. And this is already going down way farther than I thought it would, so there must be something down here. And once I do that, I make my way down this little cave. See, there's some more cobblestone. Break that out, and, you know, there's nothing there. But I also see some iron. I can't get it yet. All right, and there's some more cobblestone. It's like a whole, it's a whole wall of cobblestone. But I really want this iron. I haven't seen iron anywhere else on the map yet, so... All right, I, t I take it I found the treasure. I take it that this is probably the treasure um, that was supposed to be a pretty big deal. So not only is one of my objectives done, I also have access to everything I could ever need. So I guess I should get started on my treehouse that I am pretty obligated to build. I'm probably the first person to play this in 12 years, so I might as well do it justice. So I skipped a lot there. I made a whole little furnace setup and everything because I had to make the treehouse, so. So after the house is done, I decide to work more on the tree farm because that's one of the requirements that it gave me. And the next thing I have to do is get a nether portal. Now, I don't know where any lava is on this world, so this might take a minute. I'm not really having much luck. I don't feel like I can hear any lava or anything. So I decide to try something. Uh, in this version, you can change your render distance with the press of a keyboard button. If you just press F a bunch, then it's going to just render the world over and over again. And while most things won't render, particles will. So I was able to kind of cheese it and find a lava bubble, like a little particle. So I knew exactly where to dig. Coming back up to the surface, I put most of my stuff away, and it said build a portal here, so I, I got just about as close as I could. And there we are. So I step through the portal, and... Build a house. Grab some glowstone and make a floor with it. Slay 10 guests. Find the rarest chamber. I'm going to save you the five minutes of looking that I did. I did not find the rarest chamber. I was not imbued with some kind of ancient wisdom to just locate it. And I'm, I'm also not doing any of the other objectives. From the minute I read the signs, I knew that this was going to kind of be my final point, was just getting to the nether. Hey. So we're wrapping things up. And I'd like to point out that the pig spawner did not spawn one pig. I don't think that's how spawners work, but I, I guess I appreciate the, the thought. So with that being said, it was it was time. I, I got to go to the other part of the island with the signs. Wait, wait, no, 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 I can't. I forgot one thing. I forgot one objective. I have to build a brick structure. So I dug all that clay, started smelting, and got 16 bricks. And there's quite literally only one thing I know to build. Despite there being 18 diamonds in this structure, it definitely lowered the property value in this area. Once the brick structure was done, I was actually ready to head over to the island. Hey, you got over to this island. The I will bring more updates soon for this bit. Aw awesome. I hate to break your guys' heart, but uh, there were no updates. There, there were no updates to this world, and it's it's been twelve years, so I don't I don't think it's too likely. Once I was here, it was kind of weird. I was seeing what was genuine, just regular terrain. You could tell that no one had been here, so I don't know, I just started walking because there wasn't really much else to do. Like I said, I think this world's kind of uh, an honorable mention only. 
because this wasn't really what I was looking for with these worlds. I wanted something that kind of could serve as a time capsule for someone. Something that they put a lot of work in to make it their own, I guess. Generally what I wanted was just a survival world. And I thought that that's what this was going to be, and it wasn't. But it was a fun little diversion. It's kind of interesting to think about how popular these survival island maps used to be. I mean, I, I think I made one when I was like 10 and nobody played it, which with no ill intention, I think is kind of the case with this map too. I may not have completed the nether challenges, but I take pride in knowing that maybe I'm the first to do half of the challenges. But yeah, that's the end for this world. Luckily, the next one has a little bit more in store for us. Loading into this next world, we can see the file name is just world 2, which already says to me that this is likely to be just a real survival world. So the first thing we see loading into this is this huge tree. And I look out in the distance and I see all of these structures, uh, which instantly tells me that this definitely is a real survival world that someone spent a lot of time in and just made stuff to make stuff. They probably weren't planning on sharing it from the get-go, so it's it's really nice to see this. I want to get to the top of this big tree because I think it will provide me an even better view of everything going on down there. And I see this weird redstone contraption area. Uh, it doesn't actually serve any purpose, but I, I guess it's just for aesthetic reasons. Actually getting to the top of the tree here, we can see that all of these other trees, which I guess are supposed to look like branches, were quite literally just grown from little dirt branches, I guess you could say. I want to go check out that weird water structure. So I do my best at making a little trick to try and defy fall damage, but it, it does not end up working. At least I can count on water to block my fall damage. Alright, so we spawned at a different place this time. I have to assume this is probably the main base as it's the spawn, but there's nothing really in the chests. So I guess this area can be viewed as more of a rest stop for anybody who just happens to join the world. And I noticed this other little base, which similarly has a chest with not too useful stuff in it. I want to go check out this weird glass thing under the water. It's stuff like this that really intrigues me with these older worlds because you don't really see many random glass tunnels under the water. But for some reason it seems back then that glass underwater was like a really big thing. I explored a few worlds outside of this video that also very much seemed to enjoy the aesthetic of glass and water. So yeah, I guess this area serves as a little interlinked tunnel to some of these other water towers, but it's at such a small scale and such a small distance that I kind of have to wonder why. Again, we see just a little wooden shack with nothing in it. This staircase is really interesting because I'm honestly not sure if it's there intentionally, but at least this little cobblestone building, which is where I end up finding the most interesting stuff, including a uh, big orange smiley face. And I throw this music disc in without really looking at the color of it, um, so I don't realize that it's the creepy one. Which definitely adds to the kind of eerie atmosphere of being in someone else's, essentially, memories from over a decade ago. Because, like, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I'm not sure what that water stream does, I'm not sure why there's little holes in the wall here. I I'm just left to guess on a lot of this stuff. So not knowing what's around every corner like I would in, say, my own world, it's, it's just a bit of a weird feeling sometimes. This whole water stream is pretty interesting to me. It looks like a collection system for something, but it only has a squid. Another little wood hut, again with no real discernible purpose. So this is another one of those water features that I died from falling in earlier. And I'm really, really not sure what their purpose is. At first, I thought they may have been AFK machines, but that wouldn't really make sense because it's a single player world. And also, it just doesn't really look like one, but it was the closest thing I could imagine. 
Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Something about the way that Beta Minecraft handles torches from a far distance is, is really something. The way they flicker is kind of odd. So the water stream that we saw earlier in that cobblestone hut was actually an automatic cactus farm and a collection system. Not the one with the squid in it, but just this one in the middle between the furnaces. And sure enough, it's working. This bed's in a really weird spot, all things considered. I really want to check out this giant dirt glass and water tower. It gives a pretty good vantage point for everything happening under me, which is quite a lot. When we get up here to the top of this tower, we see another pretty odd redstone creation. Uh, again, I don't think the creator necessarily understood that redstone had functional properties outside of its aesthetics. So revisiting it now just looks like some kind of cult imagery. I think the purpose of this tower was to have the water slide down. And I get it, it's, it's pretty cool. I decide I want to check out what's happening the opposite direction from spawn because there's another little cobblestone base and another portal, actually. But again, once I get to this little base, there's still not much. So I just decide to head straight for the nether portal. And this is pretty interesting. This is actually like a pretty rudimentary nether portal hub system, which is not something I'd expect to see in somebody's random survival world in beta 1.7.3. This is pretty impressive. I decided to go through the portal that wouldn't take me out where I'd already been, just to make sure I wasn't leaving any dead ends open. And it's a seemingly pretty random area with just one big building. And this is where we start to see some, I guess, trends in the way that this person made their houses. The lowest points in the walls seem to just have little windows of some sort. But you can tell the space is unfinished. So I just decide to head on back because I'm pretty sure I've explored everything here. And I make my way back to the portal that's going to take me back to where I was before. I see another little building, but this one, uh, um, it, it does have a purpose. It's just a, bu a bunch of dogs. And I almost thought that this one was supposed to be like a, a grave or something, but there, there wasn't anything under it. So I see some more of these redstone torches, so... Of course I have to check them out. And sure enough, it's another one of these weird contraptions. This time it features lava though, so that's pretty cool. I almost feel like there's some kind of lore that the creator of this map probably made to kind of back all of this up. And if that is the case, it's a little sad that I'll never know it. My stuff from earlier is gone, but I still decide to check out this little water contraption. And sure enough, it's the same as the rest. The purpose is still very very much unknown to me. Even in this chest that connects everything, all the minecart rails pretty much, there's there's no minecarts. And I can already see another one of those structures out in the distance. And there's something pretty odd here. It's just a floating crafting table and chest with another crafting table almost directly under it. But as with most chests in this world, it's completely empty. I'm playing in peaceful mode, so there's really not much to worry about when it comes to mobs. And that was a pretty intentional choice. I kind of wanted these to just be a, a pretty lax journey through other people's worlds. And again, there's there's something about torches in beta Minecraft. They just, they just twinkle really nice. And the creator of this world really put them everywhere they could. So that nice little effect is pretty common. We're coming up on some more of these big cobblestone structures. Luckily, this one actually has a minecart. But it almost looks to me like a lot of these structures were almost like destroyed in a way. Although they're probably just mostly unfinished. I'm pretty happy to have a minecart finally, but the lever to turn on a lot of these powered rails is out of my reach when I'm actually in the minecart. So I end up having to be pretty careful about getting back on them. I somehow didn't explore the even bigger cobblestone structure here, but once I did, on trend, there really wasn't a lot here. It does give a pretty nice balcony though. 
The last building I see over on this part of the world is just a random little outpost. Again, this isn't my world, so I don't know the specific purpose of it, but I do still get a minecart out of it. I'm finally able to ride this very long minecart path back, which I'm pretty happy about because it actually works pretty well. Seeing this area at night makes you realize how many torches this person really did put down. I'm actually kind of glad that I waited to ride this whole minecart track until night because there's just something almost kind of spectacular about seeing this world and all the interweaving minecart ramps and lights and just seemingly random structures everywhere. It really is like a perfect encapsulation of what a lot of people's survival worlds were at this time. Back then it was less about finding functionality and a lot of things like making resource farms and stuff and it was more about just building whatever you wanted whenever you could wherever there was space. A lot of times you didn't have one specified base because there was just so much land to explore why wouldn't you venture out and explore more of it? And there's still some cases in Minecraft like that but I feel it was a much more unanimous scenario back then. I know at least when I start a survival world, I always feel like I have to make everything look really pretty and make every choice with a lot of thought behind it. But you know, on the first world that I can recall making, I just made a bunch of random minecart tracks. So here we see just another one of these redstone structures, this time featuring a lot more lava, but again, not really much else there. But yeah, after that, there's really not much more to this world Again, this was definitely my favorite from the bunch because this definitely lines up most with what I wanted to get out of this. This world probably means a lot to someone, and if they could revisit it, or if they have revisited it, it is probably a very interesting experience for them. I would absolutely love to go back to some of my oldest worlds on Minecraft, but they're definitely lost to time and wiped hard drives and lost and broken computers. But even if it's not my world, it's still just very, very interesting to see. I actually had another video that I was going to make that had a whole script and I was looking for some impactful meaning behind all this. But I think the thing that you get out of all these worlds most is that being in someone else's world like this has the ability to become uncomfortable pretty quickly, especially in a game like Minecraft where most of the stuff is random. But as you play through a world, you give a lot of that randomness meaning and it's always going to be personal to you. So when you take that kind of comfort and familiarity out, you're kind of left with a really weird game. It's almost like you're not even playing a sandbox game anymore. Maybe you're just in a really weird level of a more traditional 3D platformer or something. And all these little areas you see have practically been designed by a developer or a designer. These worlds always tend to have little secret areas, and they're probably areas that weren't even intended to be secrets. But just as you explore them 10 to 12 years later, with the context already removed in your mind, you start to ask yourself, what are these redstone structures? Why do none of these chests have anything in them? And why are there so many cobblestone huts? Those are all questions that I definitely will never know the answer to. All of that to say, reliving someone else's childhood almost in these worlds is just a very interesting and enthralling experience that is pretty hard to capture into words. So I thought I was done with this world. But as I'm walking down this giant wall, I realize that I forgot to explore this other little island off to the side. And from a distance, it looks pretty unassuming. There's just a lot of torches, so I assume it's just an island that was lit up, just like everything else around here. But as I come up here, I see a sandstone structure, some redstone, and a, a practically random assortment of blocks. I'm at a loss here. I can't discern any reason behind this. I don't know what exactly the sandstone structure is supposed to be. And I'm pretty sure these are the first diamonds that I've seen in this world, in this random monument. I guess maybe the redstone connects to the lore of the world somehow, but there's nothing inside of the sandstone fist. There's nothing in the dispenser, the chest, nothing. This was definitely a pretty weird place to leave off on on this world. And every time I've come back to this part of the video since, it still feels like it's like almost in the wrong world. Like everything else made at least an amount of sense, but this one didn't. But with that being done, this world was crazy. It was so authentic. Everything about it is just so Minecraft, especially pre-2013 Minecraft, which isn't an era of Minecraft that I spent a lot of time in. 
I started playing the game in 2011 as a very young child, so I don't remember much about it. So seeing a lot of these pretty questionable design choices back then is in a weird gray area of familiar and unfamiliar with me, because I can almost attribute some reasoning behind a lot of things, but at the end of the day I'm really not sure if those are very good reasons. But ultimately this is what I wanted out of this video. I wanted to get that somewhat uneasy and somewhat comforting feeling of experiencing something that someone else put so much time and heart into. Something that I'll never really be able to understand fully. And something that is so personal, yet so impersonal to me. If you can and you have the time, I would very much suggest trying this out. What I did personally was just go to the Minecraft forums, look at the map section, and sort from before 2012, which gave me a lot of results. And most of them do not have many views. I think the most replies I saw on one was maybe just four, and they were mostly just the author bumping the thread again. And in most of these cases, the authors of these maps never really touched the forums again, so they probably forgot about these worlds along with most of the people who were on the forums, which is kind of sad in a way, but again, I think it just adds to this really odd feeling you get from doing these kinds of world tours. That's all I have for today though. Maybe I'll revisit this concept sometime.